In this video, we talk about the delayed timing of West Coast Swing. What's up, gang? Brian B, West Coast Swing Online. We're talking about the timing of West Coast Swing. This is a question from Jack's Magic Bean, um, who commented on one of our other videos related to timing. And he asked about the delayed timing of West Coast Swing. A teacher had brought up delayed timing. So let's have a quick overview of timing of dancing in general and uh, then we'll try to answer it specifically for West Coast. So if we think about uh, taking a step in any kind of dance, we can think about it two ways. We can either think about trying to commit our weight 100 percent at the beginning of the beat, or we could think about a very delayed transfer of weight to that. So a good example might be if we dance ballroom, cha-cha, we might think about arriving right on the top of the beat, right on the top of the beat, but in waltz, we might think about a very delayed timing to that beat, right? If we dance waltz and I danced it not with delayed timing, it would look like one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So in reality, all dances have a foot that precedes the body. Just physically speaking, I have to have a foot precede my body, right? Otherwise, I would literally be falling and I wouldn't be able to catch myself. So the only question becomes, how quickly we transfer that weight. So if you slow mode a really high level Latin dancer, it might look like they arrive on the foot really, really quickly. But in reality, you would see a foot preceding the body, and then you would see a very quick transfer of that weight into the foot. Now, what would they do with the rest of the beat? Well, in cha-cha, they would squeeze their lats and they would sink their hips, and they would do something with that timing. So that'd be an example of the foot preceding the body, us um, getting to the foot very quickly, and then doing something else with our body while we're over the foot. And typically that's what happens in rhythm dances. The other extreme example would be a ballroom dance like waltz, where I'm very decidedly not arriving early. I'm striking the foot maybe on the one, but I'm clearly not on it. And I, on the rest of the, um, on the rest of the beat, the one and uh, I'm really taking my time two and uh, three and, uh, and filling up the space of time. So how does that relate to West Coast Swing? I would, gathered a guess that the teacher that brought this up to Jack's Magic Bean on YouTube, shout out to Jack, um, typically as teachers we see people arriving to the beat too early in beginner class. So if I was dancing a sugar push in beginner class, I would typically see people landing right on top of the foot and kind of being a little blocky. So as a teacher I would explain that they were going to, I would say that they would roll through their foot and this comes into the delayed timing. So if I was doing a sugar push as a leader, I would be presenting the foot first and uh, I would strike on the one, I would deliver my weight into the middle of the beat on the and, on the uh, I would prepare the foot for the next step, strike on the two, but not all of my weight, I would strike on the two, I would continue my weight into the and, prepare my next foot for the next beat, right? If I was doing this from a follower's perspective, I would prepare my foot early, so five and six and uh, I'd prepare my foot. I'd strike it on the one, I would get some weight into the foot, whether it's a toe lead or heel lead, doesn't matter, but I would strike some of my weight on the top of the beat, the one, I would move into the rest of the foot on the and, and I would prepare the next foot on the uh, step a little bit of the weight on the two, continue on the and, and present the foot on the uh. That's what we would call rolling count. If you wanna Google that, um, or go to our blog, look up rolling count, there's uh, a bunch of articles on that concept. But that would be my guess about delayed timing. I'm striking at the beginning of the beat, but I'm transferring in a delayed fashion onto the beat. Now the only question becomes how much, and that really is an artistic choice. Number one, some songs might be more legato sounding or slower, in which case I would want to show more transfer into it to match the music. Maybe a song that was faster with a clearer, harder beat, I would want to dance a little bit clearer into that. Um, but artistically, I could choose either one, but to maintain a higher level of dancing, I might want to think about that delayed timing if I was doing this as a, uh, as a leader, where I'm not early, I'm striking, so I'm clearly on the one, right? But my weight continues on the rest of the beat, so you see a clear beat, but a delayed movement onto it. And that's basically what you would read uh, in watching videos as higher level dancing. So, if you want more information, I recommend you head to the website, westcoastswingonline.com, enter your email address. What's awesome about that is you'll then be on our email list. We share things two to three times a week, uh, two to three times a week, two to three times a month. We don't spam you. Um, really good information. It also gives you access to Miss Megan and I via um, email where you can ask us questions and we can 
point out resources that we already have, or in this case, we can answer your question directly either by email or by video. So thanks for the support, gang. WestCoastSwingOnline.com, enter your email address. You'll get a free membership to the site. You'll be in our email list, and we can talk, and we can be friends. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.